name is Peter Wenena Mungai. I'm a telecommunication and information engineer. That's my first degree. After another major second degree in electrical and electronic engineering. Uh, but I've been building guitars since in my early days of university. So many people know me as a guitar maker, which I've been doing for about now nine years. I was born in a small town called Maimahyu. Uh, we came from a very big family, a family of eight. I had four amazing sisters, three brothers, the one is late, and they were all engineers. So I had this inspiration of one day becoming an engineer, but I had great passion from my childhood of becoming a guitar maker. So I started making guitars from cans and small items. So I had that passion of Despite also from being an engineer, I still have that passion of becoming a guitar maker when I grow up. When I joined campus, I started doing telecommunication and information engineering. So I was so much now interested in understanding the dynamics of an acoustic guitar works. Uh, so about 2013, I went to my attachment in Nairobi. So that's why I became so much interested in visiting most of the local guitars maker and see how they make the guitars. So I started doing research. So I met most of the popular guitar makers. So I wanted to know how the business model was operating and what were the challenges they were facing and how the guitars they were making, how they were doing in the market. So there when I realized that most of the guitars that were being made uh, by the Kenyan guitar makers didn't do very well in the market because most guitars that were being played most would come from Indonesia some would come from China and some would come the very high end would come from Europe and the US so I became so much interested why are we making guitars eh? and these guitars are not being consumed in the local market are not and again we are not able to export these guitars so I came into very few conclusions. Number one, it was about the wood. Most guitars that were being made here in Kenya, they were made from laminated wood, which was not, they didn't have very, very high-end sound. So uh, I came to realize most of the luthiers here, the guitar makers, didn't have the, the skill of dealing with the wood. So I started doing research. Why were the guitars from Indonesia and Europe very high-end? They made these trees from Spruce. Uh, so I visited Kefri. When I visited Kefri in Nyeri, I asked, do we have this tree called Spruce? Do we have this back end called Indian Rosewood? And they said no. So I sat down uh, and I decided, what can we do to solve this problem? Now that we don't have Indian Rosewood and we don't have Spruce, can we use the local wood and use this local wood to make a guitar that is very high end? So uh, I used to pass nearby slums, so I'd see the way we had surplus wood and a lot of waste. So that's where I gained interest and I started building guitars. I remember because I was living with my brother, I built my first guitar. I didn't have a lot of tools. I only had a saw and just few tools. So I made my first guitar. That's where now the whole journey started because things were cheap. I would get glue that was cheap. I would get all these plywood that were very cheap. So going back to school, I had this one goal. Now I'm able to make a guitar. I want to make it better. And because now we have all this challenge, I'll try and have them at a very scientific approach in solving all this problem. And number one, it was wood. So when we began giving our proposals, my proposal, I gave my proposal one year before. Because now I said, we want to have a guitar that can be played in Kenya, a very, very high-end guitar that we can export. And so because we don't have this wood, we need to pick a wood that is a close match to spruce and Indian rosewood. And because now it was a very difficult job, 
Because for you to be able to pick the right wood, you need an experience for so many years. And most of those people who are making guitars here in Kenya, including me, uh, we didn't have that skill. Because you need to listen to the wood and you need that experience of so many years. So we had to integrate and solve that problem with machine learning and deep learning. Whereby we would take all these stone woods that were imported, take their sounds, take the local wood and use an algorithm that would pick a close match. And that's where I wrote the first proposal we were doing with Dr. Shira, a very experienced bioacoustic researcher from US. He trained in US. So we started solving all these problems. So we went, we tried to look for local woods. from school. At that time I was not communicating with my family members and most people from my home. Because now I had this anxiety, I felt like I was a loser. So uh, the painful thing was now that I had stayed for about three months, I was not paying rent for my workshop. And remember it was so big, it was so special that I, it had two rooms. One was being used as a workshop and the other one was where I was living. So. I'm not able to pay the rent. I'm not able to call back home. We are not in good terms with most of the family members because now I have not been able to graduate. I still have one paper that is pending. I'm having one year out, so I can't go home. I can't call home back. So I had huge problem now paying the rent. So I remember that night the agent called and said, we are giving you a few days you clear the rent. It was for about three months. So finally I was not able to clear that rent. So they came and they closed the workshop. So I had to live with a friend of mine. Still they called me, gave me a few days to clear the, the rent. I was still not able. So they threw everything out. The tools, the wood, and everything was thrown out. And I had nowhere to take them. So they were thrown out, everything was stolen, uh, most of the wood were rained on, and that's where now I lost the workshop and the whole career of building guitars. So I now had huge problems, uh, but after three months, the doctor removed the K-wires, so I started now working on people's farm. So I started digging for people and the match I would make was about $3. And I was still doing that job. So I, fortunately I was able to get a small house that many people saw in the, the documentary that I had posted last year. So I started living in that house. We were paying about $17. And remember now farming on people's farm was seasonal. If it's picking coffee, it's seasonal. 
if you're working on this people's farm, meaning when it's dry, you're not working. So that, those hardship, on and off hardship, uh, started triggering depression in my life. I came back after long out from school. Now I wanted to come and finish my project and graduate. I normally tell people it took me 10 years to graduate with my electrical and electronic degree engineering. That degree took me almost 10 years because I would come study one year, drop. Uh, study another one year, fail a paper, I drop. Uh, this was because now the depressive episode were becoming worse year by year. I had multiple suicide attempts and I remember one incident, I woke up very early in the morning uh, but I had this idea of taking toxin. So it was hidden under the bed. Uh, I took the toxin, I swallowed, friends came, they realized I was not talking. And because they also were suspecting I wanted to commit suicide, they realized that I had taken something. So that's when they rushed me to the hospital. I was given first aid. Fortunately enough, I didn't die. One day I went. I bought about 60 tablets of a counter medicine from different chemists. So I came to the church, I swallowed them, and I lied there at the back of the church. And so everybody knew I was becoming very suicidal. And so when the pastor stood, we suspect maybe he is trying to kill himself. They were to just help him and take him home. So they took me home. I went. I just slept. About two hours I woke up. I vomited everything. I was okay. But it was very painful. Uh, seeing the way most people took advantage of what was happening in my life. I remember the time I had the news that I had bipolar, I switched off and there were kids in the hospital because I just switched off and I sat there. They were trying to talk to me, I could not respond, I could not hear anything. But over a couple of minutes, I was able to regain and they talked to me and as they say, these things do happen. People are diagnosed with mental issues. They are able to go over them and she gave me examples of so many engineers she was dealing with and gave me stories of so many engineers that were the backbone of very, very big companies that were battling with bipolar. That's when I accepted myself and I accepted I have bipolar and I started facing with bipolar and I started medication. Through a couple of medication, I was able now to graduate and I had my first graduation in 2020. And I had this amazing story that was on Daily Nation. Why you almost took 10 years to graduate. So it has been a journey of nine years. I still have the passion of building the guitar. I still have the zeal of building guitars. I still have this passion. One day I want to see myself somewhere building very amazing guitars and sharing this amazing skill to people all over the world. The most important thing dealing with all these depression, mood swings, anxiety disorder is surrounding yourself with those people who care for you. Uh, and when you do that, you have your therapies very short, you have your life very happy because these people will always be wishing the best for you. You can follow me on all my social media platforms, uh, the links are there below. Uh, I also have a GoFundMe where you can help my dream come true. Uh, I've also shared the link there. Please, please people, go support me there. 
and help my dream come true. Thank you.